We have broken, uh, broke a story over the weekend, actually, and another one this morning about the doctors involved in Matthew Perry's death, the two doctors who have been charged by the feds for supplying the ketamine that ended up killing Matthew Perry last year. And I guess the surprising part, we'll start with that, which is that they are still doctors. Um, and who knows when that may change, if it changes. We found that out over the weekend, but uh, the DEA stepped in where the medical board did not and decided to make sure that these two men in particular, Dr. Mark Chavez and Dr. Salvador Placentia, can no longer write prescriptions. And for one of them, this was part of a plea deal, uh, and that would be Mark Chavez. So um, he pled guilty to several charges related to the supplying the ketamine, and as part of that, volunteered his registration mm -hmm. for, with the DEA. Right. This is something that all doctors have in order to write prescriptions. Right. P Placentia, for his part, he is uh, indicating that he is going to fight the charges. Now, ultimately, Charles, he is facing 120 years in a federal penitentiary if he was convicted. I don't think either of these guys should obviously be allowed to write prescriptions right now, given which what is, they've been accused which of. Which is why we found out the DEA stepped in and did so, uh, made sure that they did not have that registration. Uh, but they are both still doctors. Yeah, they're both doctors for the time being because the medical board, which is different, that's what grants you your medical license. They have said, uh, taken a wait and see approach. Uh, we have opened up an investigation. People are innocent until they're proven guilty. And before they're gonna take away someone's livelihood, their ability to practice medicine, they're gonna do their own investigation before they revoke or suspend those licenses. But the DEA stepped in because there's a public health concern here with distributing ketamine. And they can do that. They have jurisdiction because these drugs cross state lines. There's a federal matter involved. And so they've gone ahead and said no registration, no writing scripts for these two doctors, even on just the allegations. Yeah, I, it would be egregious to me if they were able to write prescriptions, even the fact that they can still see patients, theoretically. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what's a, what is concerning to people when they hear that, that they can still see patients, and that they are uh, still doctors, the fact that the, at least the allegations as laid out by the U.S. attorney last week are so callous. You know, uh, Dr. Placentia is the one, according to, uh, to the feds, He's the one who wrote, who in a text message right. to Dr. Chavez said, uh, let's see how much this moron will pay, referring to Matthew Perry, right. uh, how much he will pay for this ketamine. Um, you, you know, you, you take that Hippocratic oath, Charles, and it's like, do no harm. That's the most basic fundamental thing for a doctor. And to think of these two guys who understood, who understand what ketamine can do to you and understand what addiction looks like and how you have no control oftentimes and still allegedly chose to take advantage of, of Matthew Perry for financial gain. It's so gross to me. It and just that bothers me. Look, it's ex it's extremely concerning, obviously, that these guys would practice medicine amidst these allegations. But this is a very high-profile case, so the media has covered them. You've seen their faces out there. It's going to be hard for them to practice as doctors because anyone with Google will see their faces pop up right. in association yeah. with the Matthew Perry case. So some of that takes care of itself. But you're right. While they have their license, if memories fade about this, they could get out there and practice unless those licenses are taken away. Yeah, I, I just don't, um, you know... Everyone gets their day in court, right? Um, and you also they'll get their day before the medical board. Um, but you know, it, for Dr. Chavez, who's pled guilty, I don't know what he says in front of the medical board to, to say keep my license. I mean, right. maybe they would suspend it, right? Um, but he is likely going to prison for some amount of time. Could be up to ten years uh, under the plea deal that he has struck uh, with the federal authorities. And then, like you said, with Dr. Placentia. Who knows what's going to happen, and um, if he goes to trial and loses, well, he's going away for a very, very long time. Hey, guys, this is Mindy from Pittsburgh, and I think it's great news that we have two doctors that cannot prescribe medicine anymore. That was the first step. It's really upsetting to know that they can still practice law when we think about medicine, it. We have right. teachers and we have police officers that as soon as they get in trouble, they are suspended without pay. Why isn't it the same thing for a doctor who has people's lives at stake? As we can see what happened to Matthew Perry, it could happen again. Yeah, I mean, that is an interesting thing that, and I don't know if the medical board has that as a, a punishment where you're suspended and you can't see patients, but you still get to hold your license. Right. It would seem like that's a step they could take here Right. Um, I, I, I just get, for sake Yeah, of I understand presumed innocent. I, I do think at a certain point, the authorities do need to step in. If there is a public risk, and I think obviously here, I yeah. mean, show me show me a big and that's, alleged public. And clear, that's clearly what the yeah. DEA saw.
Yeah. Um, once good good the, on them, Charles. Yeah. So um, we'll see what happens with yeah. the rest of that moving forward.